All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good from your side. Uh, this is just, just a short video so we can share it around with the friends and whoever watching. Uh, as you see in the screen, there's a Muslim is asking me a question. And this is a question always the Muslim they say to me. Uh, if you read with me, please, in the screen, you will see this Abdul saying the following. Why you don't show your face, Christian race? Are you fearing from Muslims? So why don't you show your face like David Wood, Sam Shamoon, Robert Spencer, and Nabil Khurashi? You know, the funny is, why a man, he is interested so much in seeing my face? Are you perverted people? Why you are obsessed with seeing my face? What is your problem exactly? Is the problem you have with me is my face or what I say? I notice always when I say something very harmful, Muslims cannot answer it. Right away they start saying, why don't show your face? I wish you are going to answer what we said in the video. I wish you did say anything about what your prophet did, the stupid things your prophet is doing. But all your concern is my face because you have nothing to say. So you look at like, okay, what I'm going to say to this guy? Hmm. Everything is saying is true. My prophet is a criminal. He's a hateful. He's a child molester. He's a thief. He was accused of stealing underwear. You know, even he flirted with his own son wife when she was married to his son. I mean, everything is true. So what I can say to him, ah, Christian Prince, why you don't show your face? <laughs> anyway, so I find it kind of hilarious and funny and stupid when Muslims, they ask me this question. My friend, maybe none of those reasons, not, not, not because I fear you, trust me. If I fear Muslims, I will never even speak a word against Islam. Because first of all, I am a known person. Secondly, it's very easy to know who I am. You see, I have books. I have, uh, you know, when you write books, you, you cannot hide yourself. I do seminars in the present. I keep saying to the Christians who want to invite me to the church and people take selfie with me. I'm not hiding my, 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 my face, my friend, but I'm not interested in being famous. That's all. I don't work for my glory. I work for the glory of my Lord. When, when people, they say, thank you very much for the work you do, etc., they don't know who I am. And this is a blessing for me. Our Lord, he told us, when you give with the right hand, don't let the left hand know what you gave. Now, all what I do, nobody knows. If you meet me in the street, you will not even know who is a Christian prince. So this is a special blessing for me. I fear no one, except being not to be Christian. This is the only fear I have in my life, is not is to lose being in the kingdom of God with my Lord the Messiah. Otherwise, I fear no one, my friend, because simply who are you to fear you? Who are you? I consider that those things is a death threat. And when the Muslim says to me, are you fearing the Muslims? You are confirming to us that you Muslims are criminals or what? What do you mean uh, fearing the Muslims? Why I should fear them? Is it Islam mean peace? I thought Islam mean peace. Hmm? So you are the one who fear me. And this is why you Muslims keep flagging my video. Now, about flagging my videos, I, I saw an, uh, like a statement post on Facebook uh, of, uh, of Muslims flagging my videos. And guess what happened? Each time I flag my videos, I got a lot of donation. I don't know what the connection, but look like it's working for my good. Actually, there's a gentleman, he's, I spoke to him in Skype. He promised me, each time the Muslims deflag my account, I will receive $2,000 donation. I said, to him, I said to him, well, I'm going to flag myself then. <laughs> if the Muslim did not flag me, I'm going to flag myself. He said, I said to him, is that okay with you? He said, okay. <laughs> so it's, it's very funny. The Muslim, they tried to hurt me, but it worked always in the opposite direction. And actually, I, I was connected by very well-known Christians who want to invite me to do seminars. And they, you know, like uh, 
uh, I was connected in the last 48, I was with three people. One of them is Dr. Robert uh, Mori. I don't know if you know him. He wrote books against Islam. So, you see, always God work in an amazing way, and he provide me better things. And, you know, the Muslim, they, they thought by flagging my videos, they can stop me. You're going to stop me. I have a, I have a thousand accounts, my friend. I, you know, I, I can do podcast always. You, you know, even if I lose every day an account, it's so what a big deal. I make an account, people, they follow and they will know where I am and they can download my videos still. The most important thing is the teaching will stay there and people download my videos immediately. And you cannot stop that. Now, uh, being speaking about those things, I hope people will always, uh, you know, uh, save this uh, website which I have my account there, it's minds that come, minds that come. I hope you guys, you will, you will save this, uh, uh, like you, you can subscribe there, uh, because I can post videos there up to 15 minutes. And actually I can go, I'm, I'm thinking actually to go in, uh, uh, there is, there is a website they can do live broadcast and you pay, uh, like a yearly, uh, money but there's no way there they can they can delete a video of mine either i was i will sue them even youtube actually I, we can sue them easy uh but you know things is going easy and not a big deal uh, so i'm thinking maybe after i come back from my coming seminars or let us say my coming trip uh, i will uh, uh, i will start doing that uh, account with that company uh, so you guys you can download my videos from there and we can do live broadcast and nobody can play games with us. So uh, always maintain this address, minds.com, at Christian Prince. And for sure, we have a Twitter and we, you have Batterion and we have Facebook. And, you know, and, and like Batterion, you have it already. I think all of you have it already, right? We always put it in the screen each time we go live. Uh, this one. So always you can contact me easy and always you can find what is a new account I will be in. Now this coming Saturday, we have Abdul supposed to debate me, so I will go live, you know, and we will show the Muslims how funny and how stupid Islam is, uh, you know, and we don't want Muslims to fear my face. That's why I'm not showing you my face. I look maybe scary. I look like Zakir Naik, but why Muslims? Ask those silly questions always. What is your problem with my face? What, what is the answer for what all the video I said to you about your prophet washing in a dirty water, in a sewage? You have nothing to say except what, where is your face? What is your problem? You could not find anything. You see, this guy, he speaks Arabic, so we cannot say to him, go and learn Arabic. This guy, he knows Islam very well, so we cannot say to him, go and learn Islam. And so what we will say to him, okay, what is your face? The, you know, they try to find something to make it like it's a problem. What is your problem? I want your answers. I don't want your face. And, you know, let me make a deal. If the Muslims promise me to bring Zakir Naik to debate me, honest to God, and God is my witness. I will open my camera live during the debate. And all of you Muslims will see my handsome face. What do you think? If you remember, we have a guy, his name is Rashid Indesan. And because I was insisting to debate this idiot who keeps saying to me, show your face, I said to him in that phone call, we called him at home, the coward. If you show up right now, I will open my camera in front of everybody. And the coward still, he will not show up. So I am not scared of anyone. And you are no one to scare me. You are the one who is protected by us. You go and you escape the ocean to go and seek refuge in America and in Australia and in Canada and in Europe. And you are talking about scaring us. We are the last one to be scared, especially those who speak against Islam. They will not, and they are not scared, because if they are scared, the coward will never speak against Islam. But one of the advantage of me not showing my face, 
I can go to the middle of Islamic areas and nobody knows who I am. I can get Islam busted in the middle of Islamic countries. I can go tomorrow to Saudi Arabia and you cannot stop me from entering as an American citizen. You do not know who is a Christian prince. I can go to any Islamic country and you have no idea who is a Christian prince. So this is something, a benefit for me. Otherwise, I don't care really. Uh, get me someone is worth to debate with me. Uh, because uh, I consider it like a, a worth the shish kebab, like, uh, let us say, uh, Zakir Naik, the coward who said to me, uh, bring 2,000 people with you, I will then I will debate you. <laughs> 2,000 people with me. <laughs> Only? All right. So anyway, you know, we do things and nobody can debate us and nobody can fight us. So guys, please don't forget to, uh, to uh, subscribe to my account in minds.com. Because I, I'm making short videos, and those short videos, I'm going to upload them there always. Uh, so, uh, especially the one under 15, 15 minutes. Now, the one who they are not under 15 minutes, I found a different website where we can load big videos. So, I will load them in YouTube first, because YouTube, the good thing about YouTube, when you record the video live, you download the video easy, because YouTube convert the file to a very special kind of file, which make it very small. So it's going to be easier for you to download and share later. Uh, so let us maintain that this uh, page, minds.com. And uh, if you go there, let me show you if I go to minds.com there, to my page there, hold on. All right. All right, this is my page. Christian Prince, all right? You will see always when I have something, I have a new video, etc. I post it immediately there. And the good thing about Minds, you can always click at any video, like example here, this video. Let us say you want to download the video. You click at the video, and now the video start working, all right? Now, if it is in YouTube, you can go to YouTube and download from YouTube. But if it is in Minds, let us see, if there's any video is loaded in mind here. Um, this one in mind. Yeah, no, this is this one is not in mind. Hold on. No, this is from uh, Facebook. Anyway, so like if, if a video I loaded already in mind, all what you need to do is just to click at the video and those I made them private. Uh, those are listed private uh, so you click at the video and then you will be able to when the video start playing you click at it again and you can download it's very simple very easy uh, the same you can do in facebook so we are loading in facebook we are loading everywhere but let's say we have battery on and we have minds.com is a station where you guys always you can contact me and we have facebook which is the christian prince uh, but i believe minds and battery on is the best you know, it's more stable. And by the help of those who they are helping us in donation, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, have uh, like uh, this paid account. It's like uh, 1000 you know, dollar a year for unlimited broadcast. Uh, and they give me up to seven uh, terabyte, uh, you know, memory. Uh, so we can, we can have, you know, that account. They have to do live broadcast and this way, we always be connected and people, they can always come and debate me and they can uh, uh, be live with us. And I believe, you know, I have uh, uh, tens of thousands of subscribers. Uh, they will follow where I go. It doesn't matter where, where it is. It's in YouTube or different place. It doesn't matter. Uh, I agree in YouTube is, is, uh, is easier. And we can still do it in YouTube. You know, we can always have. Actually, uh, one of you told me about an idea, which is really, I, I think it's a good idea. That you guys, you can, you know, you can open your live broadcast in your own YouTube, which means you broadcast my broadcast. So my broadcast will appear in many places in YouTube in the same time. And that will bring a lot of subscribers to your channels. You know what I mean? So, uh, so uh, there's a lot of things we can do. 
Yeah, I know, my friend. I know that people they will they will they will because it's not where we meet. You know, it's, it doesn't matter really if it's YouTube or Facebook or etc. I can do live broadcast on Facebook. I mean, what a big deal. Uh, there is uh, what it's called the uh, the Twitter live broadcast. There is many platform. You know, always this is not a problem. And the the funny the Muslims they think they can stop me. Actually, you see, I did uh, uh, right now in the last three days. I was able to write uh, almost. 25 to 30 pages of my new book and my new book is going to be small you know I'm, I'm planning to make it really a small book so like you know the Muslims they help me to concentrate more in my book you know what I mean so they try to stop me but the fact it always work in better direction I got a flag I go to Patreon I found my more donation coming which means look like people they feel you know they need to support me more when the Muslims they flag me more, which means Muslims they are helping me even more in donation. You see, everything I did in my life it was by the help of Muslims, and I will tell you how it worked. Uh, long time ago, there was you know YouTube was not doing live podcast, so there was a program. It's called Hear Me. In Hear Me, uh, there was uh, you know they had, it's like a chat room you know. So I used to do teach there. Then the Muslim, they said to me, we challenge you to come and debate us in Pal Talk. I said, okay, I never heard of this Pal Talk. So I went to Pal Talk. You know, actually, data hear me is bought by Pal Talk anyway. So I went to Pal Talk. And since I went to Pal Talk, all those who converted to Islam in Pal Talk, they left Islam because of me. And not only that, even the admins of the chat rooms who they are running by Muslims, they left Islam, became Christians. And then the Muslims, they challenged me. Uh, they posted some pictures, supposedly this is me in, in YouTube. And I said to myself, it looked like the Muslims are inviting me to go to YouTube. <laughs> so I decided to go to YouTube. The Muslims then, they challenged me. They said, if you are a scholar about Islam, how come you don't have books? So I said to myself, that's a good idea. I think the Muslims are giving me a good idea. Why I don't have books? I mean, come on. The Muslims are always right. Remember what companies they say? Customers always right. So Muslims are my customers. So I said to myself, all right, as long as the Muslims like to see my books, then let me start writing my books. So it was the Muslims who made me write my books. It was the Muslims who made me make videos on YouTube. It was the Muslims who made me go to Pato. It was the Muslims today making me insist to do better work. Uh, right now, this coming, you know, uh, in, in next, next month, I'm going to Europe. You know, in a trip, and there is some of you are organizing some, you know, good meeting for me. Uh, I hope it's going to be good and great, and uh, I hope the Lord will bless us in this trip, including in the same time. It's going to be like for for me, you know, even when I go for a seminar, it's like a vacation for me because I love what I'm doing. You see, there's a difference between somebody who do a job, and eh, you know, like you go to work, you don't like what you do, but for me, I love what I do because. I cannot describe to you how amazing and beautiful it is to see someone saying, I used to be a Muslim and thank you, I left Islam. Or somebody saying, I was thinking to convert to Islam and I watch your videos or read your books and I, I, there is no way Islam is from God. You cannot describe how beautiful that feeling is. This is why I really love what I do. And nobody can stop me from doing what I am doing. And I will try in the coming year to make more than one book. That's why I'm making short books now, because I found that people, they like more short books and short videos, you know, I don't know why. But anyway, uh, so I'm working right now in a book. It's called, it's about the Apostle Paul and the Apostles and Islam, uh, which is going to get Islam busted badly by what they say about Paul and by the stupidity of the Islamic scholars when they speak about us and the Quran at the same time. So the book, I hope, will be ready uh, by the help of the Muslims, because now I'm not doing live broadcast as before. I will do it. I will do it one next uh, Saturday. But the Muslims, they give me an idea. I mean, why I'm staying four hours every day? I can make a short video and hit in the head and go back work in your book. I mean, that's it. So we will continue our series about Muhammad while Jesus, what was Muhammad doing? I think is going to be very effective and I encourage all of you to download the videos because this is the whole point. Muslims, they don't flag someone showing her chest. 
The Muslim, they will never flag someone showing her ass. The Muslims will flag someone spanking Muhammad every day. And this is what I do. So, uh, I want all of you to download my videos. And you see, I am different from other people. Other people, if you download their videos, they flag you. They get angry because their purpose is to get subscribers. I am not interested. I'm not even using my real name. You don't even know who I am. Nothing for my glory. I don't care, really. You see? I, I uh, uh, you know, I have 20,000, 30,000, 50,000. I don't know how many accounts I have, actually. But in every account, I have a couple of thousands. And... Uh, uh, I don't care really how many uh, the numbers of those people like this account now. This is a small account. I made it just for teach to teach Arabic. Uh, but the, the the important about our mission is to teach you how to destroy this cult. This stupid cult have no value. It is evil. It's devilish, and it is destroying mankind, morality, security, economy. It's infecting everything. And we need to stand against it so we can have a better life. So even if you are an atheist, you see, this this is not only for the Christians. Even if you are an atheist, if you, if you are a person who don't care for religion, Islam is a threat for everybody. You don't want somebody tomorrow to tell you what to wear, what not to wear, what to say, what not to say, what you can eat, what you cannot eat. This is what Islam is about. Islam is a gang system when a force itself on you. And yet they say to us, Islam means peace. You see, if a Muslim, he want to kiss a black stone, okay, kiss a black stone. But you cannot force us to kiss it. If a Muslim, want to wear, his wife, want to wear a burqa, this is your business between you and your wife. But you cannot, and we will not allow you to force even your wife to wear burqa if she live in our society. Because in our society, we want to be sure that women are respected and they are treated equally to men. And when we say equally to men, doesn't mean women should have mustache like Muhammad he did. Because Muhammad is a very weird person. He forbid the women from shaving their mustache, but he ordered the man to shave his mustache. Because he's a madman. So we have a duty to do, and we have a mission to accomplish. And I'm so happy with my mission. I can say I'm very satisfied. And like my book, as, as an example, I just published my book. Uh, by the way, look at the Muslims. They are making false review of my book. <laughs> If you go and click at this book here, you will find the Muslims making false review. They never even, they don't even know a German. But anyway, uh, uh, my books, uh, they are doing really great. Uh, as an example, Six and Allah, I just published it. And uh, I wasn't expecting really, uh, people will, will uh, uh, I'm expecting people to like the book for sure. But I'm not expecting a lot of people to buy it right away. Uh, so, uh, and I think, this is happening because there is a Muslim. He posted in Facebook to go and flag me, something like this. So by by doing that behavior, more and more people, they learn about this book and they became curious. They want to know. It's like Salman Rushdie book. You know Salman Rushdie? Do you know Salman Rushdie? Salman Rushdie, you know, he made a book. It's called Satanic Verses. But nobody bought the book. It was a small, you know, his book is a small anyway. You know, it's not like a big deal. It's not even a big deal book. But then one day, a Muslim sheikh, he spoke against the book. And then the Muslim, they start talking about this book in every mosque in Iran. And then suddenly, the whole world saw 20 million Abdul in the street shouting death to Salman Rushdie. Second day, the book of Salman Rushdie disappeared from the market. And this is my dream. My dream is that one day, the sheikh of the mullahs of Iran, will come to TV and say death to Christian Prince and then all my books will disappear. Actually, in case you do not know, I am the first one the Iranian TV spoke about his videos. I don't know if you saw that uh, clip. Let me show you. Let me see if I can find it. Anyone remember? One of you one day, he sent me a video saying, Christian Prince, do you know that your video appeared in the Iranian TV station? I said, really? I said, yeah. So let me see. <clears throat> If I can find this uh, this interview, so in this interview, uh, they choose let us say the the most uh, hateful videos to Islam. <laughs> hateful videos. All right.
So I, I won the prize, supposedly. Okay, hold on, let us see. I'm trying to find it, hold on. Christian friends. Yeah, I'm trying to find. It's hard to find something by typing Christian press because that will make it appear. Here we go. Here we go. At that time, I was using an account. It's called uh, uh, Investigate Islam. Uh, let me show you. At that time, guys, if you look at the video here, you will see that I you know, the screen is not good. This is a while ago. Uh, uh, imagine I was using a camera to record the screen. This is how hard really my mission was. I was holding a camera in my hand because I could not, there was nothing it's called like software to record computer. And computer was old, like, I mean, everything is horrible. So I was uh, recording the screen of the computer. This is why you see here, the screen look different. Anyway, this is in the memory TV. So the person who sent me, he said, look, they are talking about you. They are talking about your video. And then like here, they want to play uh, the most, here we go. In this, in this part here, they are showing them the most uh, uh, like uh, uh, Islamophobic people against Islam, the ones who was fighting Islam really big deal. You see the surprise? It's my video in the Iranian government TV. I understand that the CNN will show there, Fox News will show there, George Bush will show there, CBN will show there, but I was not really expecting that my video will show in the Iranian government TV, and they are talking about about my video as to present anti-Islamic propaganda. So I am the one who present the anti-Islamic propaganda. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, like That's this is my video will show this is TV. this is uh, um, you see here uh, they are they are uh, they are like showing uh, example of people who they are, uh, you know, anti-Islam, but I was the only one who was picked up from uh, YouTube. The only one, all right? So, uh, you know, for me, I feel really uh, how, like they say, for, for them, yes, I am an enemy, but for me, it make me uh, feel happy uh, because that mean my voice is arriving and I am doing a great job. There's no way you can search my name in YouTube and you will not find videos by thousands. Actually, once I search my name in YouTube, I, me myself, I get scared. I mean, like all those, my videos, <laughs> like all of this is me. <laughs> so, uh, so God is good. They think they can fight me, but the fact it work always in the opposite way. The more Muslims they try to flag me, the more I get support, uh, the more I get help, and the more I get people who really like to, to stand with me. And actually, I encourage all of you, uh, you know, this is, not, this is not my fight. This is a fight for all of us. This is a fight for your children, for your future, for the future of your country. It doesn't matter what country it is, yours. Islam is a disgusting cult. And it's very dangerous. Go and look at Islamic countries. You know, I saw I saw comments by Muslims. They were praying like uh, today. They were uh, they were playing between Russia and uh, uh, and Saudi Arabia, right? So uh, the Muslims they were posting in their uh, like sites. May Allah make the kuffar lose. I mean, even football for them is involving Allah and their hate. This is just a football game. I mean, why you want to live as a human, love everybody? What's wrong with you? So even even football is a jihad. They want to see the Russian losing because the Russian are Christians and the Saudi are the Muslims. So who is the one we support is the Muslims. You know, the kuffar, there is no way. Actually, I just saw in the news that uh, they allowed the terrorists in, Gu in Guantanamo, uh, 
bay uh, jail prison uh, to watch the you know the game i mean ima imagine the american how nice they are to the terrorists they are making them watch tv and um, i can assume how much uh, you know uh, the terrorists were disappointed when they saw the russian uh, beating uh, the Saudi five to zero. I mean that's very horrible, five to zero. So uh, I am not really, I am not too much into those games. But for me, at the end of the day, sport is good. If a sport will save you from doing drugs and will save you, sport is good. Sport is healthy. But sport, not what some people do, like to go and uh, beat people in the stadium and kill somebody. That is not a sport no more. This is a madness and this is stupidity. So sport is good. Uh, to play sport is better than watching it because at the end of the day, any sport you play is for your health. Uh, watching sport is fine. Maybe you are an old now. You cannot maybe play sport the same you used to do before. Uh, to be a fan of football, nothing wrong with it. You know, Nothing wrong with being uh, enjoying uh, uh, watching a game you like. But you have to have a limit and not to be stupid, not to be aggressive, and not to hate people because of a game. But the Muslims, they cannot even put a line between what is called a sport and their religion. So if you see the comments, the Muslims, they speak about this football game, uh, you know, because we are committing sin, Allah was was with, not with us, I mean, committing sin. <laughs> so you Muslims, you lost the game because you're committing sin. Uh, that's amazing. That's, you know, so uh, you are doing... You know, it's it's very funny how they try to accomplish ideas based on their religion and everything. A dog is barking. He's they say, oh, because he heard the adhan. A cat, she cannot move over the the the, the Quran, which means this is a Muslim cat. I mean, this is amazing. So there is there is a kind of madness, and this brain need to be formatted somehow. And this is what we do. We show the Muslims that what you are talking about is not exist. Is not real. It's a stupid. Uh, Muhammad himself, he don't believe in Islam. Muhammad himself, he have no idea what, how to explain Islam. I saw a video, somebody sent it to me, by the guy, his name is Yusuf State. And uh, an Indian girl, she said to him, so how you became a Muslim? He started telling her about Bernard Shaw, how he saw about Islam, what Bernard Shaw saw about Islam. We cannot find any book of Bernard Shaw ever spoke about Islam. You Muslims are a bunch of liars. We can't find it. Where? We, show me the book of Bernard Shaw. So they, they speak too much, but they say nothing. We don't do what they do. We will speak little, and our little will destroy their cult. So uh, uh, please download our videos and take a note. This coming Saturday, we are going to have a debate. Mostly, I will use this account or maybe the uh, other, uh, other account. However, uh, subscribe. I think most of you already subscribe here. And I will post in advance about the, the date and the time. We have Abdul. It's for sure it's going to be uh, at 4.30. And mostly, we will do it here. Or maybe different account. There's many accounts for me to do live broadcast. Uh, maybe, maybe I will use different accounts so I can get more people to subscribe to the other account too. Uh, so there is a Muslim, he keeps challenging me, and he is desperate to debate me. And I cannot wait to see, I mean, this guy obviously is eating too much vitamin. He is uh, going to the gym a lot. Otherwise, I mean, why he is so desperate to debate me? He must be so strong. So guys, in this coming weekend, this coming Saturday, uh, you will see a, a very uh, interesting debate. Uh, and this guy is so strong. If you see the, the, the text he is sending in Facebook, you will not believe it. This guy is like going to eat me without even like, he, he, he might even uh, take me as a snack. I mean, this, I'm telling you, this guy is so strong. And I'm really afraid. I don't know what to do until Saturday. I cannot sleep. I cannot eat. I cannot think. And I'm even, I'm thinking because I'm so confused now, I'm thinking to get married. I mean, I'm so nervous. You see, you see how bad the situation, I mean, to the point I'm thinking to get married, this is how scared I am. Because like having a, having a mother-in-law is better than debating this guy. But I don't know. So we, we cannot wait to get this Abdul this coming Saturday to debate me. And uh, let us see what he can do. And you can tell, I mean, this guy, he will, 
I got I, I already I, I went to Amazon and I ordered a lot of glue because always the Muslims when they debate me they break me pieces and after the debate I spent the whole night putting myself together so I, I'm, I'm telling you I'm very scared the same as I was scared with Dr. Rohi <laughs> Dr. Rohi <laughs> By the way, the Muslim, they say to me, why you are not showing your face? Okay, Dr. Rohi, he did not show his face. He didn't even tell us what his name. <laughs> we tried to get his name. But this guy, he has books. He is a sheikh in Lazar University. He has a PhD. He lives in Egypt. Why is he scared? I don't know. I think he's scared that people would, would know his name and then they would laugh at him how stupid he is after the debate. Uh, but anyway... <clears throat> Yeah, download guys my video, especially the important ones, uh, and uh, you can cut them all with pieces. You don't have to load the whole thing in YouTube. Actually, just to tell you an easier way uh, to to cut a video, I don't know if you know that in YouTube there is a way. After you load the video, you can cut the video even after you load it. All right, because maybe that is even easier from doing it by your own. Because if you cut it and then you render the the video. It take more time to load it. Uh, YouTube videos uh, files are very small, so even the one for four hours will take you maybe demand in your internet short time to load because it is a small file. So you can load the video to YouTube, and then after you load it, you can let us say the first uh, half hour Christian Prince was talking about mm, like, like hello, how are you doing, whatever, which I never did that. Like today we have like a conversation because I have nothing to say uh, about Islam yet. It's just to communicate with you. But usually we don't waste time, right? So let us say there's a topic you are interested in. You load the whole video and then you go to, to the studio in YouTube and then you cut the part which you don't want to appear. Make it short. You can choose from the end or from the beginning. And then after you cut it, it's going to take maybe an, uh, uh, like a six hours to, for YouTube to process. Still, you can cut it again. So you can log again. Like they say, there's a part you want to take more from whatever from the start you know so you can do that always uh, anyway <clears throat> uh, my friend loving music I have a book it's called Quran and science and the deception of Allah those books is not only refuting what Muslims claim a miracle it's a spanking Allah and his prophet about such a miracle so if you want reference and something to spank not just to refute get my books you can go to Amazon Depend in your country. If you are in America, you can go to Amazon.com. If you are in Germany, Amazon.de. Those books we have, we have them in German too. So it, not only we refuted them. The, it's a hilarious. It's funny. It's a stupid. All right. Actually, one of you, as long as I'm here, one of you, he he mentioned something about the miracle of the fingerprint in the Quran, uh, in the text, in the video today or yesterday. Let me let me show you how stupid. Let me show you how easy it is to refute what Muslims claim to be miracle, miracles. You see, the Muslims depend in one thing: that you do not speak Arabic, and because you don't speak Arabic, they think they can fool you. Well, that's true, but not with the existence of people like me. If we search, let me search for the first for the miracle uh, finger print. In the Quran, I, I want to show you what the Muslims speak about. Okay, all right, you guys. This is the fingerprint miracle in the Quran. This is the article made by Muslims. By the way, all of them they are copy paste, which means it's one article. Most of them they copy paste. If you read it, you will see every man in this world has a unique identity in the shape of a fingerprint, uh, and this knowledge has been discovered lately in the 19th century. Uh, blah 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 blah. You know the long talk. Imagine you have picked up a glass of water and taken drink. Do you know that your fingerprint have left behind? And the funny that the fingerprint is discovered by the kuffar. Let us get, let us go to the to the main point. All right, Quran statement regarding the fingerprint. Quran have a statement regarding fingerprint. Is that true? That's absolutely a big fat lie and so stupid. And believers argue regarding 
resurrection taking place after bones of dead people have designated uh, in the earth how each individual would be identified on the day of uh, uh, judgment is it really how it will be identified and let us see the almighty allah answered that he not only assembled our bones but also restricted perfectly our every fingertips a man come with the holy prophet with with a dead bones and ask him oh muhammad what do you say that allah uh, will bring me back uh, uh, to life after i become like this dead bones then allah uh, you know uh, uh, god uh, gave him reply with this verse all right what this verse saying do man think his bones will shall not gather we indeed we will be able or able to shape even a small mascal of fingertips let us see if this is true or not here they continue he says this is emphasized one on fingerprints have very special meaning where is the fingerprints has anyone see the fingerprints let me show you the first of the Quran first and that's how we can love together chapter 73 verse number uh, uh, three and four all right. <clears throat> Type in English. Let us switch to Arabic. All right. Always remember when Muslim they make something, number one thing you have to consider they play with the translation. What does that mean? Translation. Does a man think that we cannot assemble his bones? So number one is speaking about bones. Number two, nay, we are able to put together in a perfect order in every tips of his fingers we will assemble the bones have nothing to do with fingerprint have nothing to do with the print have to do only with bones let us see the interpretation so nobody will say we are making things up chapter 75 verse number two and three You see, we use Muslim interpretation, not our own. We don't make up stuff. Let us go to Ajalalain first. Ajalalain is a new scholar compared to the rest, so he can give us more moderate. Muslims, they like more moderate uh, interpretation because they defend Islam better than the old one because they are more fit with the science today. Nay, I swear by the self uh, reapproaching soul of the one reapproach itself, even if it should expend great effort of being. Uh, but this is the, this is number uh, two. Let us go to number three. Hold on, it's just a stupid. There's nothing. Uh, you know, Allah is swearing by soul. Uh, does the man? Uh, does that? Does does man that is uh, that is does the disbelievers suppose that we shall not assemble his bones? for the rising from the grave uh, and for the bring back to life so this is number three okay number four maybe we can find the fingerprints there let us see and then now we'll not see fingerprints yes indeed we shall assemble them and we are able in addition to assemble them reshape even his fingers that to say restore his their bones just they had been despite and their uh, uh, smallness so he's saying even the small bones it doesn't matter how large large the bones so how much more so are we able to restore the large bones so if we are able to to resemble the small bones because the fingers they have a small bones so not only we restore the big bones even the small ones we will restore them where is the fingerprint nowhere in the verses is speaking about fingers or even a print it's speaking about the bones of the fingers and the bones of the fingers have nothing to do with the fingerprint 
So all of this is just emphasized. If you go back to the article, they will say to you, this is emphasized. Emphasized, nice to meet you, emphasize. Emphasize. So there's nothing there, nothing there of what they claim. It is emphasized. And suddenly they are talking about fingerprint. What is the fingerprint? Fingerprints 5 is now established fact that each and human being, we know that. But where in the Quran is speaking about the fingerprints? Here, look what they added the translation. Even small muscles of the fingers. But it doesn't say that. Where it says that, if we go to the translation, all the Islamic translation, one by one. <clears throat> Let us go here. This is Yosef Ali, right? Do you see the masculus? Speak about bones. Let us change the translator. Let us go to Shakir. Let us see. Maybe Shakir, he have a better, you know, okay. Make complete of his fingertips. Gather his bones. Go to Big Tab. Restore his fingers. Restore his bones. Go to uh, Mohsen Khan. In perfect order of his tips of his fingers. So the bones of his fingers, they will be established in order. Not the, not, they will not be messed up. And it's talking about assemble his bones. Remember, they are the one who called for us. A man, he came to him, and he brought with him some bones. And he said to him, can your God put me together when I am dead like this man here, like those bones? So Muhammad, Allah gave him this verse, supposedly. So where is the fingertips? So Islamic miracles is nothing but a hocus. They play with the translation. As you see here, they add the word muscular, musculus, in order to make it it's about the flesh. And it's about the fingerprint. But there's no fingerprint there. There's no print. There's no fingertips. And this is the Muslim translation. And you can go, you know, you can change all the Islamic interpretation for the verse. Like this is a Jalalain. We can go to Ibn Abbas. Maybe Ibn Abbas will bring us some finger uh, print. Let us see. Read it, please. Ibn Abbas say, let us make it bigger so you can see. All right. Yes, verily, I am capable of doing so. Yeah, we are able to restore his fingers. We are able to gather his fingers such like that, that this palm become like a hoof of a camel or a beast. He says we are able to make his hand look like the hoof of a camel. So how is it that we cannot restore his bones? <laughs> what is the fingerprint? The madness, you know? And you will find tons of articles like this have no meaning. This is stupid. Have no ground. It's just trying to fool people to make it look like there is really uh, it's pronounced muscles. Yeah, muscles, sorry, muscles. So they, they try to make it look like there's a science there, but there's no ground of the science. It's just a foolishness and rubbish talk. And you can go to any other, uh, what they claim to be miracles. Uh, like there is many websites here, if you search, <clears throat> like fingerprints in the Quran, speed of the light. All those things is hocus not even a single thing like speed of the light if we do you, do you want you want me to answer the speed of the light you can tell me uh, you know i used actually we used to do live broadcast you remember and you tell me which one to refute right away live and i can refute it very easy it's a fabrication actually the the beans is the bees is one of the most funny ones the miracle of the beans because the quran is speak about the bees you know the, the, the quran let us let us uh, let us click at the bees one <clears throat> Let us see what they are saying about the bees. The worker bees, those who gather pollen and make honey, are actually all females. The male bees do not make honey. This is only recently, however, 1400 years ago, referred to bees uh, 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 that generate the honey as a female. Look how stupid lie this lie is. 
Guys in Arabic, in Arabic, all insect, we call them as a female. So when we say a bee in Arabic, we say nahla. One bee, nahla. It doesn't matter if it's a male or a female. So the Quran, the Muslims, they say, uh, you know, the Quran mentioned that the, the word, uh, you know, in the, uh, you know, the same as the ant, by the way, they say the same about the ant. They say the guard ants, the guard ants, the Quran call it namla. But in Arabic, we don't have male ant. This is the only word we have. <laughs> you know what I mean? They say, how Allah knew? How Allah knew that this is a female? Oh, Abdul, what are you know? This is the only word we have in Arabic for the ant. In Arabic, because Arab do not know to recognize which one is the male ant and which one is the female ant, so all of them, they are namla. I mean, madness, man. But because you do not know Arabic, they say to you, it's a miracle how he knew. Now, if you go to the verse, here we go, chapter 16, verse number 68. All right? How he knew that it is namla. Look what he says. Fi butuniha. In her bellies. Butuniha. Huh? So, he says butuniha. That means this is a female in uh, her here, supposed to present in that the female. But look what I, what, what, what I will show you from their own translation, how stupid the Quran is. And your Lord, Allah, revealed to the bees. Revealed to the bees? Okay. Build your hives in mountains, trees, and in what they build. Then eat, eat. Look, look, look. For what? For the females between two brackets. <laughs> And eat from every fruit and uh, 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 follow, again, for the females. Notice here, your Lord. Okay, hold on, hold on. This is a mistake. Because the Quran is saying that, based on what they said, guys, not me, based on what they translated for us, that the bees, Allah, he inspired them to go and eat. So when they go out, they eat out. And then from their bellies will come honey. And this is supposed to, according to the Quran, this is the shit of the bees. Excuse my language. That's not only stupid, this is very stupid. The God of Islam think that bees eat fruit, shit, honey. Do you see it? This is their translation, not my translation. In the same article of the miracle well, by the way the, the whole translation is, is is a hocus too all those things i will show you you can check at the translation you'll see how different it is but we go with this one so allah inspired the bees to go and eat to go what eat then eat from where from every fruit so what the quran is teaching that bees eat from the fruits but it's not true the fruits is not what they eat they can get their food from the fruit. Their food is the honey. The bees, the worker bees, they are the one who just spoke about the worker bees, speaking about, about science. The worker bees, they go and they collect the nectar, but they don't eat it. The verse here says, then eat from every fruit, not from what comes from their belly. So what the Quran is teaching, that the bees, they go out, they eat from the fruits, and then they shed honey, and this is what we eat. So we are eating the shit of the bees. But the fact that Allah, the, the God of Islam do not know, when we eat honey, we are eating the food, or let us say the cooked food of the bees. You know what I mean? We are eating the cooked, this is the cooked food. This is how their cooking is. This is the cookies of the of the bees, if we can say. This is the cake of the bees. So this is the, the jelly of the, the, the bees. So we are not eating their shit. Muhammad in the Quran saying it's coming from their bellies. The fact, the fact, there's there is many mistakes in here. Number one, that the Quran claim that the worker bees is the one who eat. Do you see it? They eat from the fruit, but the worker bees, they don't eat from there. The worker bees, they carry the nectar and they give it to other bee in the hive. It's not even the same one who make the honey. The bee come back, deliver the nectar to other bee using their tongue, not their stomach. 
you know they have like a storage it's not a stomach stomach is a is a place where you digest that is not a stomach to digest this is, they have like a little case connected to their tongue where they can store the nectar so they go and they deliver to other bees and that bees is the one who will work to convert that nectar into honey and then that honey will come and that will they will eat but the quran is making it the opposite that the bees the worker bees they go and they eat out then they shit in <laughs> so in one verse you see from the same page i did not even open anywhere i did not go anywhere and look what he said here it's coming from botuniha this is the word that, to prove to us that they are females right to prove that they are females they said botuniha from it is billies all right but the honey is not coming from the billy you can go and check it out that's that's false so number one mistake they eat honey according to muhammad they eat the fruit they shit honey Number two, honey is coming from the bellies. And we can do the same for every single uh, claim they, they have about miracles. All of, all of them, they are a joke. I do not even need to to, uh, to study. And here, look, they are having for you uh, a picture supposedly about this. Butunaha uh, in Arabic means multiple stomach. My friend, Butunaha is not about multiple stomach for one bees. It's about... The, the billies of the bees, because he did not mention one bee. You see how they deceive you? Look, if we go to the verse in the Quran, I wonder why they did not post the verse in the Quran here. Let us go to the Quran. Deception is their gain. <clears throat> All right. يخرجوا من بطونها all right. شراب مختلف ألوانه. So Allah He inspired the bees to eat, and from their bellies, all the bees will come a drink. Did not say male, did not say female. Let us see. And the Lord is in, taught the bee to build its cells in hills and in trees, and men. And in men habitations so Allah is the one who told them where to build their places and then to eat from the produce of the earth and find with the skill and the suspicious uh, spacious paths of the Lord there is issue there their issues from within their end their billies a drink of ver varying colors wherein is healing for men so, you know, Muhammad is, is claiming here that it is Allah miracle that he made the bees eat fruit and shit honey. All right. Guys, always to follow me, why don't guys subscribe to Patreon? When I start broadcast anywhere, I post there where I'm going to be. In Patreon, you do not need to be a person making donation. You do not need to. You do not need even to donate a dollar, not even a five cents. You can subscribe to my account there, and when I pause there, you can follow me. Very easy. All right. Any other uh, claim the Muslims they have so we can laugh? This is totally a clear mistake in the Quran. The worker bee is not the one who make the honey, and they don't eat from the fruits and the same for all the articles they have all of them they are funny and all of them they are stupid Quran to the Christians uh, they are they only this uh, disbanded after they receive the knowledge of the Bible uh, among them so here they are cursing us to the Muslims yeah 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 party a cursing party uh, let us see different uh, Miracles of the Quran. <clears throat> yeah, which one? Which one? Speed of light. You want to see speed of, speed of light? Do you want to see speed of light? 
as long as they have it in the top, let us see what the speed of light is. Muslims believe that angels are low dynasty creatures and that God created them originally from light. They move at any speed from zero up to the speed of light. If, 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 if. This is what the Muslims believe? Are you sure? Let us see if this is true. Okay. It is the angel who carry out God orders. If, if, if. Those angels take their order from the preserved tablet. See, God, you have a preserved tablet. <laughs> well, Muslims, why Allah have a preserved tab tablet? So the angels, they are taking their order from the preserved tablet, not from Allah. So they go and like, they check the tablet, their email. What does that mean? Anyway, let it go, let it go. Somewhere in outer space, if, if, if it's somewhere, somewhere, you know, the hard drive is there somewhere. And not from the God throne. If, 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 if not from God throne, oh boy. They commute to and from this preserved tablet to get their order from God. In the following verse, the Quran describes how angels travel when they commute. I like it when they say commute. From this tablet and the speed which they commute to and from this tablet turned out to be known speed of the light. If, 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 if. Where is that? Chapter 32, verse number 5. Allah rules the cosmic. The cosmic. Look at the cosmic. I like the word cosmic. A fear. From the heavens to the earth, then this affair traveled to him a distance on a day, uh, sorry, a distance in one day at the measure of 1,000 of your count. First of all, this is uh, Muhammad is copying from the Old Testament, right? Where the Bible, the Old Testament says that one day for God is equal to 1,000 years for, for us. But the Bible does not speak really about that a day of God is really equal to 1,000 years. It's, you know, what, what, what is meant there, that time for God is nothing. For us, it's long, you know, for God is nothing. He's out of time. But let us see how this is became about the speed of light. It is angel who carry out those orders to the people. In the measure of the distance, neither in kilometer nor the miles. And here they start, like, counting for you. So now it is 1,000 years. Hold on. Hold on. Just to show you. How mad this this statement. First of all, how you know that this is at the speed of light? To know the speed of something, you have to know the distance. Is that correct, guys? Is that correct? To measure the speed, we have to know the distance and the time. Do we agree? How many of you is good in mathematics? We cannot find out what is the speed if we do not know the time and the distance. You see, always mathematics is about a three. Answer and two, known. So in this case, the known should be either we know the speed and the time so we can find out the distance or we know the time and the distance so we can find the speed, etc. But here they just say to us that the angels, they go to a tablet which is exist somewhere. <laughs> is that true? Did they say? Did they say that the tablet is exists somewhere in the outer space? So how you know that this is a speed of light? <clears throat> you divide the one thousand year in what to find out that this is the speed of light? Guys, are you following me? This is how stupid the statement. It's stupid. There's nothing there. But they try to make a miracle out of nothing. First of all, this is a statement is quoted from the Old Testament, where it says that one day for God is equal to 1,000 years of your time. But this is not literally, this is metaphorically, that God, time for him means nothing. All right? So here we notice how the Muslims, they play their game to try to deceive you, and they don't tell us how they can get that this is the speed of light. Just because Allah, he said that the angels, they do his command by the order of 1,000 years. Well, I have a surprise for you. In chapter 35, verse number 5, yes, it says that. But in different chapter in the Quran, it says something different. So what happened to the speed of light? If we go in the Quran, 
we will find the following. تعرج الملائكة والروح إليه في يوم كان مقداره خمسين ألف سنة. So if the speed of light is something fixed and the tablet is a something fixed, so what happened now? Why the distance, or let us say the time, became fifty thousand years? This is not the speed of light no more. Do you see it? So how come they mentioned that verse, but they did not mention this verse? What happened to the speed of light? If they are, this is about the same thing, about the angels coming up and down, receive it, the order of Allah. The tablet location changed. How you can prove that? Because simply, they just said in their article that the tablet is exist somewhere in the outer space. So again, this is just a stupid claim, have no ground. They are just trying to fabricate a miracle is not exist. Anyone did not get my answer how easy it is? And by the way, this is a contradiction. How the, the angels will take 1,000 years and then the angels will take 50,000 years. The Muslim, they will say to you, the 50,000 years is in the judgment day. It doesn't matter. What, Allah is changing the tablet location? <laughs> what happened? Same time, if the angels, they need 1,000 years to go, based on their article, and 1,000 years to come, how Muhammad was receiving his answers immediately? As an example, when, when the Jews, they came to Muhammad and they said to him, What do you say about Zulkarnain, which means Alexander the Great? Muhammad, he waited for a week or two, and then he told them, okay, Allah, he sent me the message. Come and listen to it. People, they come to listen to it, and he got them the message, which is very funny and very hilarious about Zulkarnain, he found where the sun set, and Zulkarnain, he found where the sun rise. So if the angels will take them 1,000 years to go, that's mean, this is one way, and then 1,000 years to come. That's been 2,000 years. So if the angels, they deliver Muhammad something today, in order to come back again to Muhammad, they need 2,000 years. You know what I mean? If this is the maximum speed of the angels, 1,000 years is going to take them 1,000 years in our time, the time of Muhammad. So if Jibreel, he went to get the second order for Muhammad from the tablet, okay, today Jibreel arrived, he gave Muhammad some pizza. Now Jibreel will go back. He need 1,000 years of the time of Muhammad to go back. Then he need 1,000 years to come back to him. That's mean 2,000 years. So if, if, if Jibreel, he left in the time of Muhammad, yet he is now in the way to come back. Because now we are in the year 1400 after Muhammad. So there is more than 600 years left for Jibreel to come back to deliver the second verse. So how Muhammad was delivering verses every day? Are you getting guys my point? Did you see how, how stupid it is? What they say? And here, if you read it, I mean, we, 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 how you conclude that this is the, about the distance, uh, the speed of light. Look here. Since, since this verse is referring to the distance, then then God is saying, we're, we're the, this is referred to the distance? Where is the distance? Guys, where is the distance? Anybody can see it? Where is the distance? This is about time. Nowhere is speaking about distance. You see how they lie to you? So they say, since this verse referring to the distance, but they will not tell you where is the distance there. Where is the distance? And they try to mix it with science in order to confuse you and to fool you. They are assuming that you are a foolish person who have no idea what they are talking about.
the funny here, uh, look what this says here. <laughs> See the physics. <laughs> I like it when a Muslim says, see the physics. <laughs> oh, oh boy. Oh boy. But the Bible says, and what is killing me, they try to make to mock the Bible. Look what they say. But the Bible says something else in Genesis 1, 1 to 31. The Bible explains how the sun is related to the day and night. That's false. That's false, you liar. If you go to Genesis, if you go to Genesis, all right, yeah, just to show you how we got them busted. Hold on. If we go to Genesis 1, All right. Let us go to Genesis 1. I will show you on the screen. Hold on. <clears throat> All right. Genesis 1. Actually, let me, let me play the audio. So it will save me from reading. Um... The book of Genesis. <laughs> Chapter 1 In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth And the earth was without form and void And darkness was upon the face of the deep And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters And God said Let there be light And there was light And God saw the light that it was good And God divided the light from the darkness and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Right. And the evening and the morning All right. were the first day. Okay. So you see here, uh, uh, they say, if you go back to the article, let me read for you what they say. Uh, but the Bible says, uh, uh, read from here. Common sense says that sunlight illuminate earth. And that without sunlight, sunlight, darkness will cover the earth. If there's anything simpler, but what does this have to do with this here? Nothing. While well, you are inserting this, this uh, topic here. But the Bible says something else. Uh -huh. It keeps jumping to this page. Okay. But the Bible says something else. Bi the Bible explains how the sun is related to the day and the night. That's not true. That's not true. You see, God, he called the day, the light, he called it day. The light, not the sun. Because sun is not created yet. You see how they lie? Look carefully. The Bible explains how the sun related to the day and the night. The Bible says that one, that one, that on the first day, God created the light and the darkness in the earth. That, that's not true. God did not create the darkness. This is only in the Quran. Nowhere in that verse it says God created darkness. It is the Quran who says Allah created darkness and this is additional proof that Islam is a false religion because you do not need to create darkness. Darkness is exist. It is just the absence of light. If we go here, Go make it. This one is fine, but I want to show you something more clear. <coughs> and this one actually, there's many verses they can expose Muhammad regarding understanding the day and the night. Okay. Let me take the screen off so I don't hurt your eyes. 
this uh, this Quran doesn't show like uh, maybe I should search directly for the number. <coughs> Chapter 21, verse number 33. A clear mistake in the Quran. It is he who created the night and the day. How he create the night? How the night is created? Obviously, this is a stupid mistake. Let us go to the Bible. You see, in their in their article, they say it, that the Bible says that God created darkness, light, and darkness. It doesn't say that. Read with me carefully. And God said, "Let there be light," and there was light, but darkness was exist already. See, this is very scientific. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep darkness is already there you do not need to create darkness god did not create darkness because darkness is not really exist darkness is nothing <laughs> so look in their article how they lie they say that the bible says that god created day and night no god created light and then he called the light day. But yet the sun is not created. So how we have a, we have a light, we have a light, we don't have a sun. When God created the light. There is many sources of light. And that light is what is called day. You see, uh, for us, because the, the sun is the most close part of the, to the earth, uh, we, the light of the sun is what is day, but is the source of the sun is the only source of the universe? Obviously, God created billions of lights. So He said, "Let be light," and the light will be in all His universe, whatever He created, and that is day. Whatever light is, that is day, and that will be morning, and that will be a night later for mankind. Because they have their own light, which is going to come, and you know, and, and God, He says, say it here. And the Muslim, by the way, they make fun of this verse. They say that God, He created uh, the sun after. If you if you go and read in the in the article, say, it. the first evening come, and the first morning followed, but God did not create the sun until the fourth day, especially after that. Let me see what here it says. After three evening and three morning. You see, I will go by the Muslim logic. If the sun is not created, so we should not have a day. Guys, isn't this what they are saying? If the sun is not created yet, then how we have a day? Before I answer you from the Bible, let us go and see what your prophet said to get you busted. Because I want you Muslim to say that to your prophet. Look like your prophet is a stupid and you are Muslims are the smart one. This is Muhammad talking. Read with me carefully. And this is a Sahih Hadith. This is not uh, weak, need vitamin D and C. All right. Muhammad said, Allah the exalted, the glorious, created the clay on Saturday. So we have what? We have a day. It's called Saturday. Okay. And then he created the mountain on Sunday. All right. And then he created the trees in Monday. All right. And then he created things in Thailand neighbor on Tuesday. Okay. And he created the light in Wednesday. <laughs> oh, boy. So they were saying how we can have a day and night and yet the light is not created. I mean, the sun is not created, correct? 
But this is what their prophet said. He is copying from the, from the book of Genesis, but in the wrong way. Do you see it? So the Muslims, they are trying to convince you that this is an error in the Quran, but this is exactly what their prophet, but in a stupid way. Their prophet said that there was Saturday, and there was Sunday, and there was Monday, and there was Tuesday, and then there was Wednesday, and Wednesday when Allah created light. In the Bible, it's coming in order. God, he made light, and he called the light day. So we have a day already. That day, that day is not your day. Who said that this is your day? This is about the beginning of the form of the earth. Even scientists, they say, that the time, the beginning of the time, it was totally different. The year is longer, the, the, different. It can be, uh, uh, you know, like uh, the day, the night, everything is different because simply it's about how the earth is going around itself and around itself in the front of the sun. How close it is to the sun, how far it is from the sun, etc. So, the light is already exist in the Bible, and God, he called the light a day. In the Quran, there is no light yet, yet the Quran called the first day a day. So as long as they are asking us that question, that question should be asked to Muhammad. You just confirm to us Muslims that Muhammad obviously is an idiot. How Muhammad, you see, this is, this is their own words. This is their own words, not mine. Read carefully. The Bible says that on the first day God created light. Okay, so now we have make some, something makes sense. In the first day we have light. And God called the light day. So that is the day. Okay. And darkness on earth. They did not create darkness. We proved that. The first evening come and the first morning followed. But God did not create the sun until the fourth day. That can be explained in many ways. Uh, you see, when God, he provides light, the, the, the Bible does not prov provide us uh, details about what light is that. I mean, uh, is it something like um, reflection of a star, of a planet, or something? We do not know what is it exactly. Always says that we have a light, and that is, the light is the source of the day. And then when that light disappears, that will be what is called night, darkness. But he did not create the darkness. Then when the sun came, or created, that is the sun of the earth. But the sun of the earth is not the only light for the earth. Actually, there is light we receive right now. It's coming, traveling maybe for 50, 60, 100, or a million years. We do not know. There is a star's light. If you look at the star right now, you see a light. This light did not come to you now it's a traveling maybe since a hundred a hundred year ago maybe 200 years ago we do not know depend on the distance of this light so there's many source of light is coming and that can be day and that can be night which means there's a certain time where the night is taken over and a certain time where the day is taken over which means strong light is taken over it's not necessarily to be the sun because the sun is not exist yet and then when God, he created after that, he created the sun. Let us see when the sun is created. Because the Muslims, they are rejecting this. Specific, uh, specifically, after three evening and three morning, so three evening and three morning occurred on the earth before there was a sun. So according to the Bible, daylight occurs without sun. No, that's true. That's true and false at the same time. The day is not the sun. God, he said, the light is the, is, the, is the day. He did not say the sun is the day. And God created day from the beginning. So what is the problem? The problem will happen to you. Because if this is your logic, three in evening and three morning occurs. And there was a day. But the sun was not created to the, to the, to the fourth day. So how, how Muhammad talk about days? Here we go. This is your prophet. Let us go to the hadith. And he created light in Wednesday. Let us count how many days before the Muslims they have a day, according to the Quran or their hadith. Allah created the clay in Saturday. This is one. 
Sunday, two. Monday, three. And then Tuesday, four. And then Wednesday. So how Muhammad he called it Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and yet in Wednesday we have a son. And you have no light at all in Islam. You see, in the Quran, Allah created the sun in Wednesday. He did not create light yet. So what do you mean by Saturday and Sunday and Monday? You know what I mean? Muhammad is even naming them. He's naming them Monday, Saturday, Sunday. So those are 24 hours. Dark you know the dark and the and the and the day if you go to a different planet the day is different some planet they don't even have a day some planet they are always in darkness because they are not close to any star they went in where, where is the location of, of, of the this planet so uh, uh, what the muslims you know accusing the bible with is what they have their own they try to convince you that the Bible is teaching scientific error when the fact they are the one who have the scientific error. Where is the day? How you have Saturday and Monday and, and, and Tuesday and Wednesday and yet you don't have the sun? What Monday mean without the sun? What Saturday mean without the sun? What does that mean? So do you see how they try to fool you always with their own false statement? They fabricate things, it does not exist. And they try to make it, it is you who believe in the wrong, but the fact it is them who believe in the wrong. In the Quran, Allah supposedly said that Allah, he created the day and the night. Okay, how you can create a day and the night? You explain to me, Muslims. Any Muslim can explain to us? Allah, he claimed that he created the night, which is false. You cannot create any darkness. Because darkness, simply, you close your blind, you have darkness. Right? You know, matchbox have a darkness inside it. Go inside a, a box, any box. Close yourself. You have a darkness. Did you? Are you creator now? Did you create the darkness? Darkness is just the absence of the light. In this chapter here, look what the Quran said. <clears throat> Proving another mistake in the Quran. It is He who created the night and the day and the sun and the moon. Okay, and all each one of them is going in round its round curse curse okay each one of them what each one of them the night and the day and the sun and the moon allah teaching the muslim that the day and the moon the day and the night the sun and the moon they are object and they are flowing that's why he, he say in different verse in the quran that it's allah who merged the day and the night and they will never meet together They will never meet together. Are you sure? No, we can meet together. Don't you have? You never heard of the eclipse? Guys, is my screen showing? Is my screen showing? Read really carefully and laugh at the Quran. Chapter 36, verse number 40. It is not permitted to the sun to catch the moon, nor can the night outstrip the day. What does that mean? Allah, he believes, or he is teaching the Muslims, which is Muhammad, that the day is an object by itself and the night is an object. They will never meet. But this is false. 
but night and day they will never meet. <laughs> Actually, you know, if you if you a little bit think a little bit, the night is always the case. Let me let me make it clear for you. If you bring a flashlight, flashlight, all right, in dark room, and let us say you put an egg in your in a table. And you put a small flashlight at that egg. That egg will have a day. Is that correct? It's going to be shiny, covered by uh, the light. All right. The Quran saying that the day and the night they will never meet. Never, never. Whatsoever, there's no way. But the fact the night is still there, because making a light in a small spot does not overcome the night, which is the darkness, because the whole universe in darkness, which means the major space of the universe is in darkness. A small, tiny space is not in darkness. <clears throat> Guys, do you understand my point? Anyone understand my point? Let me, let me open Google Earth. Hold on. Because in Google Earth we can we can show you the, how the the Earth uh, like uh, I'm sure all of you are educated and maybe more than me in this this issue. <coughs> um, let us see here. All right, this is Google Earth. We will go and show the day and the night. All right, here we go. Okay. Right now, there is a certain part of the Earth is covered by light. Is that correct? This side here is covered by light. The other side is covered by darkness. Okay. The Quran said that day and night they will never meet together. But this is absolutely false. Because everything around in the space is night. Including, including the area which is facing the light of the sun. Why? Because the light of the sun will not make the space shiny day till it hit something solid, which is the earth in this case. You know what I mean? So if you are flying, if you are flying in this area here, facing the sun, still that area is a dark area because the space is dark. Light come to your eyes as a reflection. Or if you are seeing something directly, the light will come to your eyes directly. But doesn't mean that will make it a day. If you turn a light of a lamp for me in the middle of the night, in that moment in where I am, we can say it's a day, but it's not. You know what I mean? It is still, it is still a visual thing. It is not real. So when God created light and he called it day, that is very accurate for he is saying that whatever that light is exists is your day is exist. Wherever that light is disappear, that is going to be called darkness for you. It's not night. It's a, it is darkness. It's the stage of something natural to happen without creation. It is darkness. So the light will be called day. Let, let us say, you know, the Bible speak about naming things, describing things, not about just creating things. So the day is the light. It's not the 24 hours. It is not uh, a, a certain form of movement of the earth or the sun. It is the light itself that is day. You see, when Jesus, he said, I am the light of this world. So that means the light have many meaning. It can be about uh, appearance of light. It can be about a timing. 
It can be about metaphorical thing, which is about Jesus, that he is the salvation. So light in the Bible about creating light, God provided source of light from the beginning. The first thing he created was light, not darkness, for darkness has already exist. And the light is day, not the 24 hours. Then the morning and the night have nothing to do with the sun yet, because already we have the source of light. The Bible does not describe what is the source is, but it's enough for us to know that there is already light. But in the Quran, there is no light, yet there is days. If you go in the Quran, as an example, <clears throat> not only in the Hadith, you will see that Muhammad is saying the following. We can go to which verse? Uh, there's many verses. Uh, yeah. All right. In chapter 41, verse number 11, you can start from the beginning, from verse number 2. You will see that the Quran says that Allah, He created the earth in two days. Take a note with me. The Muslim, they object that there is day, but yet there is no sun, right? Okay. This is Quran now. This is not Hadith. They cannot say it's weak. Allah created the earth in two days. Then he created the mountains and whatever, etc., in the top of the earth in four days. All the substance, the mountains, the water, etc., in four days. You see it? Four days. Read carefully. Four days. And then he went to the sky, and the sky was a smoke. There was nothing there. That's what smoke means. And then he created the lights. So based on their logic in that website, how we have day, two, three, four, five days, and yet we don't even have light at all. You see, in the Bible it says God made light, still they don't like it. It's not enough for them. The Quran says that the, the last thing Allah created, it was the lamps. And you can change the translation, by the way, Muslims, if you don't like this translation, because maybe this guy is a liar, you know. Your Muslim scars always are liars. I agree with you. Do you see it? Then he turned to the heaven when it was a smoke. And then he said to the earth, Come both of you, willingly or loath. They said, We come obedient. The earth and the heaven is talking. And then, then he ordained them seven heavens in two days. And then he inspired the, each heaven its mandate. Then, the last thing, he created the stars. So what is the first two days and the third day and the fourth day? So he created the heaven in two days and the, days, the, the, the heaven was a smoke as we see here. All right? It was empty. And then in two days, he made each heaven its affair. And we adorn the no, the narrowest, uh, the lowest, uh, sorry, the, the the lowest heaven, with lamps. So the last thing Allah created was the lamps. So based in this, how the Muslims will solve this in their article? So there's a three evening and three morning occurred on the earth before there was a sun. Based in your Quran, there is six days, my friend, and there is no sun yet. So according to the Bible, day, light occurs without the sun, yes, because there is a light already. Are you ignorant or what? The first thing in the book of Genesis said that God said, let be light, and there was light. There was darkness. They do not need to create darkness. And then God said, let be light, and there was light. So we have light from the first 
of the creation, the first thing to be created for the, you know, after, for, for, for after like uh, speaking about the earth, how it was, the earth was in darkness. The first thing God created, it was the light and the earth was in darkness. But in your Quran, the last thing Allah created is the stars. But yet he is talking about two days, three days, four days, five days. Read carefully. How this happened? Madness. Madness and stupidity is the logic. How Allah speak about two days? You see, Allah created the earth in two days. Then he created the mountains. In four. And by the way, this is a contradiction for different verse in the Quran. Because different verse in the Quran, you see here the order of a creation. Earth is first, mountain is second. <coughs> earth is first. And mountain is second. And then he went mountains and substance of the earth is second. And then he went to the top of the to the sky. And then he made them seven heavens. And then he created the stars. But this is different from chapter number 79. In chapter 79, Allah created the stars first. Then the earth and the mountains and the substance. It's totally opposite order. And we made a video about it before. Anyway, guys, I was actually I was, I, I was thinking to uh, do broadcast for 15 minutes. You believe it? Look how long. Uh, I will keep those videos private for those who they are uh, subscribing to Patreon. And please understand why we are doing that. So you will be the one who can help to spread what we are doing. You will be the first one to inform. And as I said, you do not need to be a person who is donating in the Patreon. Subscribe there, make an account. Do not donate, my friend. If you don't, if you, I'm not asking you. For sure, I welcome anyone to make donation, but it, you don't need to do. Uh, this is not about donation. It's about. It's like my Facebook. All right, it's like a Facebook. As simple as that. Uh, so you will be updated always about where we are going, what we are doing, what is next. And later when I go, when I go in my coming trip, I'm going to post for those who they are in Patreon because I trust them. I will post for them videos about where I am uh, and they can share it. All right. But uh, usually what I will do, I will, uh, I will not share a video immediately about where I am. Let us say I'm doing a seminar today in this place or even a visit in a church or even a historic place. I will take videos. I will post it. And you guys feel free to load it wherever you wish. But I will post the video maybe three, four days after I'm leaving that town or even that country. Uh, so subscribe to, uh, to Patreon. The link is in, in the front of you in the screen. So you can be always updated and you can follow us wherever we go and however we do. Now, if there is some of you uh, from um, uh, Sweden, uh, uh, Finland, uh, Denmark, and maybe you would like to attend my seminar, my coming seminar, because we might do some seminars there. Uh, let me know. You can contact me on Facebook, all right? And we will make somebody to contact you, uh, like to your phone or etc., to give you more details about where and what we will do, all right? For those who they are in those territories. And, uh, you know, I hope the Lord will provide us with more... Uh, um, more and better work in the same time i appreciate people who like to support us in what we do and i you know for me i am always honest with, with people who support me when i go to do my seminar is, is a vacation for me in the same time it's a seminar you know uh, because as i said i love what i do so for me this is my vacation i go i enjoy myself uh, i enjoy traveling i enjoy talking to people i enjoy helping people guide them uh, you know, like, uh, whatever I go, I am who I am. It's the same person. It doesn't matter. Really. It's YouTube. If you are sitting next to me in the airplane and you open a topic, you better take it or leave it. Don't open a topic with me unless you are going to handle it. So whatever I go, 
I do what I do. However, it is a mission. It is a vacation at the same time. I love traveling. I love meeting new people. I love when I go and do a seminar. Uh, how people they you know they they uh, uh, you know they share their love with me. Uh, it's always really amazing when you when you meet those people who they hear you, and they see you for the first time. I, I have a lot of wonderful experience of people. You know, let me tell you this story before we finish. Uh, once in the in the Philippines, uh, this is they told me that after you know, uh, there's two uh, Christian uh, uh, missionaries uh, ministers. They contacted me and they want to they want to invite me to their church. And then I came in the sh uh, coffee shop. They are sitting in the coffee shop. It was like five of them. And then one of them, he spoke to the other person privately. They took him in the side. I don't know what they are saying. But later they told me what was happening. The first one, he told the other one, does it sound like him? <laughs> he said, I don't know. Let us see. <laughs> we need to talk to him more. You know, I just said hello. So they sit and talk to me. And, you know, and they start giving like each other a signal, like with the thumb, like, yeah, this is him. Yeah, he is. He is. And later they tell me, when well, first time we met you, we were not sure if this is really you or someone else. So it is. And the funny, I, I like uh, one of those who they were meeting me. They are very famous in the Philippines. Actually, once he called me here. Uh, uh, his name is Mary uh, Kiamo. Let me see if I can find you. It's, it was very funny because I am the one who should ask in, like, you know, it sounds like I am the famous one when the fact the one sitting next to me, he is the real famous, he's an actor, he's a very well-known person in the Philippines. Uh, let me see. <clears throat> very, very nice people, you know, very, you know, Filipinos are, are really wonderful people. All right. You see, this is this is the, the the brother who was talking. They are talking to him about is it him? This is him. Do you see him? So he was sitting next to me, and then later he told me. Actually, he told me in the last visit I went to the Philippines. He told me this story. He told me, do you know like when first time we met you, what happened? I said no. So he told me this is what happened. Like they were not sure if this is me or not, and how they spoke in the side privately. Does it sound like him? Are you sure this is him? You know, maybe it's not him. So. He is a very well-known person, and this this is the 700 the Club, by the way. And by the way, I did an interview in the 700 the Club when I was in the Philippines last trip. And I do not know if they published it or not. You know, I'm, I better ask him, maybe. Uh, his, his name is Mary Keown. Uh, he's an actor. He is a journalist. He is a very well-known and very wonderful person. All of them, actually. They are very nice people. So it was funny that they were so excited to talk to me. And it was in the same time lovely, but I should be the one excited to talk to them because many of them, they are very important men and they are very famous in the Philippines. But yet they were like excited to meet me. So, you know, those feeling is very hard to explain how, how it is, how hard, you know, I mean, it's, it's very, really hard. Last time I went to the Philippines, I, I met with uh, uh, two senators, three senators. Uh, two congressmen. I met with the head of the Senate, the founder of the Senate in the Philippines. And his son right now is the president of the Senate in the Philippines. Uh, very, very important people. And you should see when I met those people, how much like they were as, as if I am the one who is the head of the Senate. And it's like it's the opposite. Very, very wonderful people. Very humble, very loving, very amazing you know I, I i cannot really describe how wonderful those filipinos are um, and i have the same the same thing wherever i go wherever i go my lord he provide me with wonderful people i never have in my way a bad person somehow it's like magic when i go somewhere the lord provide me with the best for sure, all of us, we wish to have the same thing. But as if I always I have a hand, you know, uh, uh, it's hard to, to, to explain to you. 
You know, the Muslim always, they pray for my death. And you know that. And they wish to, for me to die. I have, uh, you know, I have a habit uh, just to keep my house clean. So always I keep, uh, like, you know, the, the garbage container. I take it outside every few days and I put it in the sun. The one I leave it in the kitchen. So I can be sure that there's no, uh, you know, bacteria or anything. So I have this container down in the grass, and I forgot it. It became night, and then suddenly I remember. I remember like 10 o'clock at night, because I went to the kitchen, I went to dump some garbage, I could not, oops, I, for, I left it outside. So I have this garbage container laying down in the ground, in the grass, and I wanted to grab it. But before I grab it, something hold me. Don't. I don't know why, I don't know how. And then I push it with my foot, and right away a snake came out of the container. It is like I can describe to you how I felt. I did not, I did not get scared, by the way. But I am assuming that if I put my hand, the snake is going to bite me, because you know the the handle of the of the bag is down facing the ground, which means it's going to face the head of the snake. So if that whatever it is, the hand of God, whatever you want to call it, did not hold me from grabbing the handle of that plastic garbage container, mostly the snake is going to bite me. So, uh, uh, if you are with God, God is with you. And if you are a person who try your best to help others, help will come to you. Sometimes it's a help you cannot recognize. Sometimes it's a help you recognize. I can give you tons of examples. You know, like uh, translating my books. Translating my books. Always somebody say something, something against me, and something good right after that happened, including translating my books. Uh, the translators who translated my books, not even one of them get a penny. All of them, they do it for free. And if you ask me how they come and how they ask me to help, it's unbelievable stories. Each one of them have a story behind it. Maybe he himself or she herself, she do not know about it. Always the Lord, he provide me with amazing people. And look now, if you see my books, I have in French. If you go and see the French translation, guys, you will not believe it. The French translation, those who read my book in French, they told me the one who translated your book is something big deal. He cannot be just a translator. This guy is no, like is, is a very professional, high quality educated person. And the Lord, he sent him to me. Same for the Dutch, same for the German. Same for the French, you know, the, 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 the Swedish. The Lord always provide you with your needs as long as you work for his glory. So do your best. Be with him. He will be with you. And this is my experience. And it's really always beautiful and it's really amazing. And this is why when I go in a seminar somewhere, I really enjoy meeting people because they are loving and I have no fear of anyone is bad. For it is not in your hand to take my life or to give me life. I will do my mission as long as the Lord, he want me to be doing it. And I will be doing it for the last second of my life. And that was what is important for me. The Lord is amazing. Be with him and he will be with you. Sometimes you might be tempted. Sometimes you might wonder yourself, like, okay, I am with the Lord. Why things is not doing good for me? You, you know, based on my experience, that what we think sometimes is bad, it can be the best for us. What we think it is very ugly, it can be the best. There's many people, they come to Christ because something bad happened to them. You believe it? Because, because of the bad, the bad made them come to the good. There's people who used to be criminals. There's people who used to be prostitutes. There's people who used to be uh, scammers. There's people from all kinds of, of people. 
something bad, really bad happened. So bad should not be for you a reason to stay away from the Lord. Bad can be even more positive to make you more close to the Lord. This is why you see if somebody he is in a wheelchair, he is more close to the Lord more than you. Someone is blind, he is more close to the Lord more than you. Yet he is, not, he is the one who saw nothing yet. But he believed he saw the Lord more than you saw him. He should be upset. Look, I'm blind. I mean, this is not fair. People, they can see. I cannot see. What I did. I'm just born this way. Why everybody can see? I cannot see. So he should be really upset. Same as for the Christians who they are facing discrimination and persecution in Islamic countries. If you, if you go and speak to anyone, uh, a Christian from Indonesia, you will not believe it how much Christian they are. Or from Pakistan. You know, I receive uh, uh, messages from Pakistan. They are, they, are, they are crying. They are crying just because, you know, they are talking to me. Amazing Christian. As if I am the apostle of, I'm no one. I'm a sinner man. I am no one. But because they have too much love, because they have too much discrimination, they feel more than we feel. They knew the Lord more than we know him. Discrimination is the same as fire is going to do to the iron. Steel is simply a stage of the iron. Either you will be an iron, normal thing, or a steel. But a steel with heart. Tough, strong, but you have a very nice heart. So bad, if you are with the Lord, bad can bring good for you. The same as, you know, like the woman she is giving birth. How bad it is to see your wife suffering and she is screaming, crying. But how beautiful it is what she is going to give you after that. The screaming, the crying, the pain is so bad. But the gift of God is coming and it's so beautiful. So I hope that people, they, are, they understand what our Lord is about. Today I spoke about the blind man. And if you go in the Bible, you will see that the, the Messiah, he spoke about people. They think a blind man is blind because he commits sin or maybe his parents commit sin. This is the Jewish idea. But this is not a true. This is not true. Anyway, I want to say thank you guys for uh, uh, for being here. And um, Saturday, we will have a live debate with Abdul. And we will do it in this channel. All right? So please subscribe. 4.30 p.m. There's Abdul. He is sharp in his teeth. And this guy is very strong. I heard that he have like a karate belt. He play karate. He play kung fu. He play jong fu. He play all kinds of fu, okay? Fu, uh, you know, like, uh, he play rendezvous. He play every, all kind of fu. So this guy is coming to debate me this coming Saturday. I don't know who's he. I don't care. Don't ask me those names. I don't care who is he, who care. What is important that he play karate, all right? So this coming Saturday, Saturday at 4.30, this guy, he promised he will call me and we will play karate with him, all right? But please, guys, don't forget to join in Patreon. Be in my group, you know, and you can you can help Indonesian or not. This is not I'm not this is not about this. It's about communication, so you can stay contact in contact. And don't forget to subscribe to Minds.com. Minds.com, as you see in the screen, slash Christian Prince, and Patreon is in the screen already. All right. Actually, even Minds is there. And this is my Twitter. So always you can be connected with me because, you know, uh, you might lose an account. Uh, who cares? I mean, we can open tons of accounts every day. Actually, many of you offer me accounts for YouTube to do live podcasts anytime I wish. So this is not really an issue, not a big deal. We are doing a great job. And this mission 
nobody can stop it. And don't ever let them make you give up. Don't. The devil, he wish that you will give up one day. Actually, the more the devil, he resists the fight, the more we are doing to do better and we will become stronger because that means we are in the right direction. If a Muslim, he says to me, God bless you, it's me, a Christian prince, is a corrupt man like James White. If the Muslim, they say to me, Christian prince is an amazing person, that means there is something wrong with the Christian prince. This is not a medal of, the, uh, of, of honor for a Christian. If Muslims, they praise you, that means you are a false person saying, speaking, teaching false. There's no way those who follow someone like Muhammad will praise those who follow someone like Jesus. If you are a true follower of Jesus, there is no way they will praise you. They will praise you only if you are a hypocrite, liar, thief, and a person who deceived the Christians. Someone who will say, whoever say Islam is ISIS is a liar. That Muslims would like because he's serving their agenda. And we will not be one of those. Not now, not tomorrow, not in a thousand years. So thank you guys for being here. Until we see you tomorrow, I will make a short video again. Tomorrow is a Friday, right? So we will make a short video about the series we are doing. While Jesus doing this, Muhammad was doing that. So don't forget, please, to download those videos because even those videos, I will take them down from my channel. And I have many reasons for that. Number one is to be sure that Christians are downloading. So download it, save it, publish it, put it in Facebook, put it in Twitter. Uh, Twitter maybe they don't allow you to have short, long video, uh, but there is many places you can load the videos. All right, let us let us work together. Get the blessing of the Lord. You see, I make the video, but yet, if you pause the video and somebody saw the video and you change his mind from converting to Islam or from to leave Islam, you got the blessing of the Lord because because of you, posting that video, that person. He left Islam. You just invited someone to Christ. Get the blessing. The blessing is not only the one who made the video. You post it somewhere. People watch it. You are getting the because this is your work now. It's not. Yes, I did my work, but now it is your work. Because if it's not you posting that video there, maybe this person he will never learn what he will learn. So. This is very important for you as a Christian. You don't want to. You don't want to go one day to the to the to the to the Lord and you say to Him, "I brought nothing with me." What you brought with you? And you know the beautiful thing about this, that you might help and save the life of somebody, but yet you do not know about what you did. There's many people they watch the videos, and they change their mind about Islam. But I never met them. I will never hear about them. Few only is the one who tell me thank you, etc. Or they mention because of what is the law, I left Islam. But there's a lot of people they watch and they in their mind they say, Come on, this this Muhammad is a crazy man. There's no way I'm going to follow him. I was so happy one day when a young girl, she maybe she's like 17, 18, this was in Palto, and she she came to the mic and she said, uh, I was going to convert to Islam the week after or like a few days after, and I stopped by one of your videos. And I found that how stupid I was to make such a decision. Imagine how beautiful it is that this, <clears throat> this young uh, girl, she was going to join the devil religion. And it's not her fault. You see, if you look, if you look at the media, all the media saying the opposite, saying Islam is wonderful. Islam is not ISIS. After all the killing happens, still we have Big scammers, famous people saying Islam is a good religion. This is why it's very important you share with your family, with your children, with your neighbors, with your brothers, with your sisters, so they will not be victims. They will learn the truth. I am not speaking against Muhammad because I like to insult this guy. No. I'm just sharing the truth. People who put their head in the sand, 
and they think that there's no walls around, they are stupid. Don't be one of them. There is walls, and there is evil. Evil is real. My friend, evil is real. The Bible speaks about it, for it is real. It's not a fiction if you are not with God. Look like we lost connection uh, in YouTube. Uh, but anyway, we are done for today. I want to say thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. And until I see you this coming Saturday, Christ is Lord and Islam is false. Thank you very much and see you soon again.